So we are back for part number two with the Salt Beer Factory and their wild and woolly hexagon project. And today we face off with the hot one. And if you missed the last episode, let me tell you, the not-so-hot one had something of a kick to it. So this, I'm not gonna lie, has me just a little on edge. Now I do like my food, and whenever possible drink, with a healthy kick to it. But right now, I am somewhat struggling to imagine what three times the heat of that last beer is like. So, here it is, the hot one. And from the looks of things, there doesn't appear to be any real difference in the brew's makeup. It has the exact same blurb on the back, the exact same can at the front, except one small difference. Those three dreaded chilies. So I guess we can definitely expect that same level of dankness. And that bitter, bitter grapefruit finish should remain too. Just with a more severe level to the burning. So let's dive into the fires of hell once more. Let's get pouring. So this one, it's still got that sweet mango aroma. It's a little hoppier on the nose too. And again, you're getting a little of that warming chilli in there. So yeah, right up top, you're getting that warming of chilli and that mango, which is a little sweeter and it's actually a little hoppier than the previous one. There is that subtle dankness in there too and a little bit of bitterness, but that warmth is really what's masking everything at the moment. And yeah, that grapefruit again is taking a real keen hold, and there is a real dryness and bitterness in the finish. And to be honest, I'm not noticing a huge rise in that heat. The heat, it's there, it's noticeable, it's got a right old warmth to it, but it doesn't feel like it's been amped up all that much from the previous one. But that warmth is leaving a lovely tingling sensation in the mouth. If anything, it's the lack of the mango at the top that's really the difference here. It was giving a huge dankness to the previous beer. This one, it's not got that same level of dankness. It is just warming and very, very bitter. Although there is a much hoppier presence at the top. It's much more citrusy than mango. And in that bitter finish, there's almost a almost a grassiness to it. And I tell you what, maybe my trepidation is working against me a little bit. I honestly thought I'd need a big old jug of water sat on the table next to me, but I tell you, it doesn't seem that much hotter than the previous one. And now we're down into the bit. It is that citrus and bitterness that is really starting to steal the show. That heat, it's again, it's faded off a little bit, and that sweetness of mango, it's trying to jab its way in there, but it's not having any luck. And you've got a bright light citrus up top before fading into that warming chili, and then in those bottoms, a real grapefruit grassy bitterness. Mix that with that heat, and it fades out beautifully. And you also get a feel for some of that again, 8.2%, it does feel quite boozy. So there was a noticeable difference here, and it wasn't just because of the extra fire. It may well have been ever so slightly hotter than the previous one. I definitely don't remember my lips tingling on the last one, but the change? It's due to the other side of things. That dankness in the first beer just isn't really here at all. 
and I can only assume it's that extra heat that's completely drowning it out. Because there is a little sweetness in the mango to begin with, but also that loses its way completely. And there's a much lighter, fresher, even hoppier citrus note that kicks things off. And dare I say it, it makes it feel almost like a normal beer. You just have to forget that the room is burning down around you. But for me, I found it much more balanced and much easier drinking. If, say, a wild, over-the-top bombardment could ever really be called easy drinking. But it just seemed much more consistent throughout. And I put a lot of that down to the surprise factor. I wasn't expecting that last one to carry quite the heat punch, and it definitely caught me completely off guard. This time around, I was much better prepared. But all that said, warnings should definitely be heard. Neither of these should ever be taken lightly. Both are complete atom bombs and should be handled justly. These beers aren't brewed for the masses, they're brewed for the masochists.